Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Still chugging along with that seasonal maintenance. Every boat that has anti and bottom paint has to do touch up at some point in time. The anti and paint is what we'll be focusing on in this video. I start out by cleaning the area where I'm going to lay my tape. This season I'll be using frog tape just to see if it gives me those nice sharp lines. No, I'm not sponsored by frog tape, but I will need a lot of it when it comes time to do the Boston wheel up. We'll be using the tape to protect the existing gel coat. If you can tell by now, green is my favorite color. When masking off the waterline, it's best practice to pull the tape out as long as you can to keep it straight as you can and place it alongside the hull. That way you don't get variations in the line whenever you pull a new piece of tape off the roll and lay it against the hull. However, in my case, I'm not doing the waterline for the first time and I'm not trying to correct it. So what I'm doing is actually following the existing waterline and just placing the tape as close as possible to that. Because the sun gets very hot at times and you could get a bit woozy outside, the blue tape is my margin of error. Without the blue tape, I might as well don't use the green tape. I'll say this now because once the sanding start, you won't be able to hear me, but I'll be using 80 to 100 grit sandpaper just to key the surface for the new touch up bottom paint to stick. If I were removing all of the bottom paint and putting on brand new bottom paint, I would have went with something like sandblasting versus sanding.
I'll be using Interlux Fiberglass Bottom Coat NT in their green color. It's the existing paint that's on the boat now, and it's best to stick to the paint that's already on the boat. If you decide to change technologies or a different brand, you would need to remove all of the bottom paint before you apply that new paint. Certain brands use chemicals that may not react well with the next brand's paint. I'll leave a link to it in the description just in case you want to take a look at it. first strokes of the paint goes on near the tape line just to make sure the paint goes on heavy in that area. If I could have done one thing different with what I'm doing now is I would have went over these brush strokes with a roller. Once the paint dry, the brush strokes stayed in the paint. You may catch a glimpse of it further down in the video. Okay, now that's enough with the baby brush. Let's bring out the rollers. The mini rollers I'm using are Red Trees Mohair Mini Rollers. I'll leave a link to them in the description. I use these for when painting and laying out my resin. Not even five minutes in and that blue tape already comes into play. There you have it. Margin of error. In my defense at this point, it was hot. I have on a lot of clothes. 
And I have on a mask where I can barely breathe. I'm not painting the entire bottom of the boat. I'm just painting the spots where the paint has chipped off, faded through, or for some reason it's just discolored to the point where washing it would not bring it back. The back part or the area near the stern of the boat is pretty good. I'm just correcting areas like the trailer rash that you can see here in this video further back near the wheel and mainly the sides the front of the boat got painted because cosmetic reasons i didn't want once i come off a wave and the next boat saw me or something like that that they just see a patchy bottom so i just painted as far back as i could and that was more than two-thirds of the bottom of the boat all of that's been sanded so the paint should stay on another season or so but this boat never sits in the water, so anti fallen paint isn't really needed. I may just switch to hard bottom paint in the future. Now that meditation time is over, the moment everyone's been waiting for, the tape pull.
your favorite chicken place ain't got nothing on those lines. Crispy. As the tape comes off, I want to thank my subscribers that take the time out to comment on the videos. Those ones that remind me about my safety and those ones that give me tips and tricks. I'm glad that you see it fit to take time out to give me a minute of your time and just leave a comment on the video. Those who haven't, I encourage you to reach out. Share your thoughts on the videos. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I can do better. Remember, I'm not a professional. I'm a DIYer. I'm not showing you how to do things. I'm showing you how I did it. So you can go ahead and do it for yourself. The quickest and easiest way to support this channel is to like and subscribe. If you want to go further, think about watching another one of my videos. Until the next video, guys. I'm out.